Okay, good morning, everyone. Again, in another Monday, with a new topic, we will know and we will understand about buprenorphine. By this, this topic will be taken by team from GCRI, and I request Dr. Preeti to introduce the team, those who are taking up this topic. Dr. Preeti, can you please introduce the speaker and moderator? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, madam. Uh, Dr. Lekha is a second year resident in Department of Palliative Medicine, Gujarat Cancer and Research Institute. Uh, she is uh, self-disciplined, hardworking and maintaining regularity in work and time management. She is a diligent student that she determined towards the study and any work allotted to her. She has two poster presentation. One is management of total pain and other symptoms in case of vaginal fistula due to advanced uh, uh, CSR weeks. Uh, at annual conference of uh, oncology forum. Uh, she has another uh, presentation, uh, presentation use of indwelling peritoneal catheter for the management of recurrent ascites in patient having terminal malignancy at IAPCON. She has one publication various tools for uh, many assessment of pain in International Journal of Evidence-Based uh, um, nursing uh, journal. Her dissertation is identifying the need of palliative care in emergency department at State Cancer Institute. Um, about Dr. Bhavna, she is a moderator of today's uh, session. She is associate professor at Department of Palliative Medicine. Again, Bhavna is team player, always uh, positive, helpful and cooperative. She is our uh, successor for the palliative medicine at Gujarat. She is training co coordinator for all type of training like uh, IAPC certificate course training for the um, as a medical use of essential narcotic and training of medical officer and nursing staff for implementation of palliative care at Gujarat. She has more than 10 publications. So over to Dr. Lekha and Dr. Bhavna for today's topic uh, of Buprain or Thin. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Preeti. Dr. Lekha, can you start sharing your slides, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, is it visible, ma'am? Uh, Yes, we can see your slides. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Lekha Raval, uh, presenting the topic of book pronouncing today. Um, starting with the introduction. Buprenorphine is a semi-synthetic, highly lipid-soluble, long-acting, phenanthine derivative, thiabine congener, non-selective, mixed agonist, antagonist, uh, strong opioid. Uh, chemical structure, uh, of buprenorphine is uh, it is morphine in alkaloid uh, that is 7,8-dihydromorphine 6O methyl ether in which position at 6 and uh, 14 are joined by CH2-CH2 bridge and one of hydrogen uh, of the N methyl group is substituted by um, cyclopropyl and hydrogen at position 7 is substituted by 2-hydroxy-3-3-dimethylbutanyl uh, group. Uh, Buprenorphine otherwise is an uh, essential uh, 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 Buprenorphine otherwise is, is on the list of WHO's essential list medici medicines. Uh, it is Schedule 3 drug. Uh, drugs with moderate to low potential for physical and psychological dependence. Uh, abuse potential is less than Schedule 1 or 2 drug, uh, but more than uh, Schedule 4 drugs. It falls under category C. Uh, either sh studies in uh, animal have revealed the adverse effect on the fetus, uh, or and there are no con control studies in women or studies in women and animals shows any are not available. Uh, drugs should be given only if potential benefit justified the potential risk to fetus. Um, 
uh, as we all know that uh, uh, opioid there are four types of uh, major four types of opioid receptor mu kappa delta and orphan uh, that is oral one uh, which are present uh, respectively they are present in uh, mu receptor in three and four synaptic neurons and uh, spinal cord the epidermal gray uh, nucleus raphe magnus thalamus cortex and peripheral inflammation Kappa is in uh, spinal cord and paraspinal uh, paraspinal region and hypothalamus. Uh, delta in olfactory centers, motor uh, integration areas in cortex and limited distribution in nociceptive non areas. And often in mainly in sp uh, spinal cord. Their action on uh, mu uh, buprenorphine section on mu receptor uh, is having very high affinity with partial agonistic at uh, low doses. Uh, while kappa is uh, with high affinity, it is antagonist. It does having antagonistic effect uh, on delta receptor. A high affinity antagonistic effect and uh, orphan. Uh, it is very weak affinity with very weak potential. A partial agonist. Uh, very high affinity partial agonistic uh, uh, with very high affinity partial agonistic effect. Buprenorphine greatly reduces the effect of uh, most other uh, opioid receptor agonists. It can cause precipitated withdrawal when used in actively opioid dependent person. Uh, this way, we are using uh, buprenorphine in uh, de addiction or opioid uh, substitution therapy. Uh, it has very low incidence of respiratory depression and other. Uh, side effect uh, uh, like then of opioid, other opioids and uh, fatal uh, uh, on kappa receptor this activity hypothesis to underlie some of the effect of buprenorphine on mood disorder and addiction uh, this is the diagrammatic representation of effect of buprenorphine on opioid receptor uh, so blue is showing uh, op other opioid, uh, opioid uh, drugs like morphine fentanyl uh, which is having full agonistic effect on mu receptor, while uh, buprenorphine being partial agonist, uh, it X, Y, or GI signaling pathway and cyclic AMP pathway, causing primary analgesia and reduce opioid dependence. Uh, while uh, agonist antagonistic effect on kappa receptor, it reduces tolerance and uh, have, might be having antidepressant effect. And the other uh, third one is an ORL1 receptor or other uh, GABA receptor, which causes secondary analgesia and it reduces rebound. Uh, other key points are uh, buprenorphine can antagonize the action of more, uh, more potent mu agonists such as morphine. Uh, so it is being used in opioid replacement therapy. Antagonistic effect of kappa uh, receptor may uh, limit the spinal anesthesia, hyperalgesia, sedation psychomimetic effect. Uh, this may also explain the antidepressant effect of uh, buprenorphine. It has very high affinity uh, at the new kappa and delta receptor, but very low affinity at the receptor, uh, oral receptor. Though at oral receptor, it produces secondary analgesic effect at therapeutic dose. Effect of buprenorphine on the receptor other than opioid receptor. Uh, unlike other opioids and opioid antagonists, buprenorphine binds only weakly to and possess little activity at sigma receptor as well, which is a uh, base of uh, many uh, psychiatric, anti-psychiatric, uh, neuropsychiatric drugs. Uh, then buprenorphine also blocks the voltage gated sodium channels via local anesthetic binding site. This analyzes its potential uh, for local anesthetic property. Similar to various other opioids, buprenorphine has also been found to act as an agonist on tall like receptor 4 uh, with very low affinity and few analgesic affinity of buprenorphine requires both exon 11 and exon 1 associated neuroreceptor price variant. Now the history of buprenorphine, uh, researcher at, uh, researchers at Rekit and Coleman, now just called as Rekit, I had spent over 10 years attempting to synthesize some uh, opioid compound with structure substantially more complex than opioid, but that could retain the uh, desirable effect while shading the undesirable side effect. Uh, they found success at, uh, success in uh, at human, human trial began in uh, 1971. By 1978, buprenorphine was first launched in UK and injection was uh, used to treat the severe pain. Uh, with the sublingual formulation released in 18, 1982. 
well in usa uh, buprenorphine was patented in 1965 and approved for medical use in uh, 1981 uh, recently in 2021 uh, seeking to address the record level of opioid overdose uh, mainly for, for heroin uh, in the united states removed the requirement of special waiver license for prescribing physician so now in us and european union both only the desi uh, designated clinician can prescribe meta uh, only meta uh, can prescribe the methadone for opioid disorder uh, while for buprenorphine clinician who have completed basic training and received a waiver license can allow to prescribe this uh, buprenorphine uh, for me by so it, it is more uh, uh, available than methadone. Uh, so next is pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic property. Uh, uh, first is uh, absorption and availability. Uh, buprenorphine being highly uh, lipid soluble drug, uh, absorption through skin and oral mucosa is much more but uh, higher than uh, other routes. Uh, oral route, far oral buprenorphine directly go extensive uh, first mass metabolism and it convert into inactive metabolite. Uh, that's why uh, oral buprenorphine, uh, oral route is not preferred and uh, uh, oral formulation are not available. Um, it only contains 15 percent very low bioavailability. Next is sub sublingual route. The sublingual route uh, rapidly absorbed to the oral mucosa followed by slower absorption into systemic circulation. So, bioavailability is around 50%. Intravenous and subcutaneous route bioavailability are, uh, is 100% by definition. And in uh, case of uh, transdermal route, it is uh, irrelevant because absorption of buprenorphine into screen and uh, systemic circulation is influenced by both skin condition and cutaneous blood flow. Uh, like uh, absorption increases if skin is warm and vasodilation is there. Uh, so, uh, instead of bioavailability, uh, buprenorphine uh, transdermal route is uh, delivery rate is reflect the, uh, reflecting the mean amount of drug delivered to patient throughout the patch recommendation duration of use. Uh, this is the pictorial, uh, pictorial diagram of uh, approximate bioavailability of buprenorphine uh, by route of ad administration. Intravenous being the highest, uh, followed by intramuscular, then nasal, sublingual solution, buckle trip, uh, sublingual tablet, and then oral. Uh, among which intravenous, intramuscular, uh, sublingual uh, buckle strip, and uh, sublingual tablets are uh, formulations are being used. Uh, pharmacokinetic details. Uh, in case of IV buprenorphine, comparison between IV buprenorphine, transdermal hypoxacin patch, transtec patch, and butyrin patch, uh, with, uh, along with sublingual tablets. Uh, in case of IV, onset of action is 5 to 15 minutes, being time to peak plasma concentration is 5 minutes, and half life is 3 to 16 minutes. Uh, duration of action is uh, approximately 6 to 8 hours. Uh, in case of transdermal hypertensin patch, which is three day patch, uh, onset of action is uh, five, uh, four to four to twelve hours. Uh, time to peak plasma concentration is thirty four hours. Uh, in case of uh, thirty five microgram patch and twenty nine hour for uh, seventy microgram patch, um, plasma half life is twenty four to twenty seven hour, and uh, duration of action is three days. Uh, same uh, transtech patch, uh, 21 hours for 35 microgram patch and 11 hours uh, for 70 microgram patch is onset of action. Time to peak plasma concentration is 60 hours and plasma half-life half is 25 to 36 hours and duration of action is four, uh, four days. Butane patch, uh, which is available in India, uh, like same strength, uh, 18 to 24 hours is uh, on, onset of action. Peak plasma concentration is three uh, three days and plasma half life is thirteen to thirty five hours. Uh, duration of uh, action being seven days. Sublingual tablet uh, time of ox, uh, onset of action is ten to twenty minutes. Uh, peak, peak plasma concentration is thirty minutes uh, to three point five hours single dose and it decreases with the multiple doses that is one to two hours and plasma half life is uh, twenty four to sixty nine hours. 
hours and uh, duration of action is six to eight hours. Now, the metabolism of buprenorphine, uh, while ingested by oral route, uh, it undergoes extensive fast, met fast metabolism in GI mucosa and liver and converted to non buprenorphine. Uh, uh, it converted to non buprenorphine by CYP2, uh, CYP3A4, CYP3A5, and CYP2C6. And uh, when it goes to under glucuronidation, uh, it, uh, it is converted by UGT2B into A. UGT-A1A and UGT-1A3 to uh, non-buprenorphine glucuronate and uh, buprenorphine glucuronate. Uh, here is a comparison of uh, metabolites of buprenorphine uh, affinity-wise. Relative to buprenorphine, non-buprenorphine has, has extremely little anti susceptive effect, but markedly uh, depressed respiration. Uh, while in case of uh, non buprenorphine has high affinity for p glycoprotein and uh, so it's uh, it has very poor brain penetration um, in contrast to non buprenorphine buprenorphine and its glucuronide metabolites are neg uh, negligibly uh, transported by uh, glycoprotein it has sedative effect uh, but no effect on respiration uh, glucuronides of uh, buprenorphine and non buprenorphine uh, also bio, uh, they are biologically active and represent major active metabolites of buprenorphine. Here is a table showing uh, non buprenorphine having no noxiousity effect and res uh, but having higher uh, rate of uh, respiratory depression, uh, which uh, which can be a side effect of uh, this non buprenorphine uh, present as side effect. Uh, while buprenorphine glucuronide having more sedative effect and non buprenorphine glucuronide having noxiousity effect. Uh, this is the KI value uh, that is antagonistic uh, potency. Uh, KI value higher being lo lowest potency and uh, lowest being high high highest potency. Now, the excretion of uh, buprenorphine uh, after parenteral and sublingual uh, administration, 70% of buprenorphine is excreted unchanged in the feces, uh, and it is more likely that rest goes into enterohepatic circulation. Uh, while glucuronides of uh, buprenorphine and non-buprenorphine, they are primarily, primarily excreted in bile. Non-buprenorphine is mainly secreted into urine. As uh, buprenorphine has large volume of distribution and highly protein bound, it does not get accumulated and, uh, in the renal environment, or nor can be removed by hemodialysis. But it can cause uh, placenta and secreted in breast milk. Uh, that is why I explained the uh, category C of this drug. Now, moving uh, to available preparation combination dose and dose of, uh, doses of buprenorphine. Uh, first one being uh, buprenorphine transdermal patch, which is available in India. Uh, this is the basic uh, diagrammatic, uh, diagrammatic uh, picture of uh, this is picture of uh, transdermal patch having the first is backing film uh, that requires uh, uh, that that have uh, drug laser wire. Uh, this is rate controlling micropore membrane, which uh, ex uh, which continuously deliver the drug to the uh, skin and uh, in between the comes adhesive uh, layer and uh, this is the skin showing uh, capillaries. Uh, now the buprenorphine being highly lipid soluble drug, it is more suitable to use as adhesive transdermal patch which deliver the contained drug as contained uh, constant rate into systemic circulation via stratum corneum Bypassing first but, uh, pass metabolism, the drug is delivered at skin by surface by diffusion or percutaneous absorption into circulation. The drug is delivered at constant and predictable rate, irrespective of site of application uh, via micropore membrane for several hours. This is the uh, actual uh, picture of buprenorphine patch. Uh, now the advantages of the transdermal patch or rather any patch over conventional routes of medicine administrations are uh, they are controlled release and it has uniform plasma uh, drug concentration. It improves bioavailability by avoiding fast, uh, fast metabolism by enzyme creation. It is easy and pain uh, free application. Uh, it is useful in patients of dysphagia and having tablet phobia. 
um, and patient compliance adherence is improved as patches are simple and non invasive non invasive and convenient while disadvantages over conventional routes are uh, it is cost effective it may get removed accidentally that causes waste of drug you have to apply new patch uh, if in case that occurs uh, third one is reservoir of buprenorphine accumulates in the body in adipose tissue significant significant and persistent plasma level will be there for at least 24 hours even after removing of patch or discontinuing patch uh, that is not helpful if any uh, toxicity or unforeseen occurs and user guide of patch uh, that is first you have to select select the area um, it should be dry non inflamed non irradiated hairless or if not hairless then remove the hair with scissors not by shaving uh, these are most common sites it's uh, common sites the patch are being used uh, front uh, right and uh, left chest chest uh, upper arm uh, upper back and the flank Uh, then you have to clean the site, remove the non-adherent transparent film from the patch, and in such a way that applicant's finger should not be uh, in contact with uh, drug of drug part of the patch. There should be not uh, there should not be any wrinkle or air bubbles while applying the patch, and press for 30 seconds firmly uh, so it will stick to skin properly. Uh, then mention date and time, and uh, then uh, uh, rotation of uh, so next time when you apply the patch on the same person it should be in rotating manner in order to minimize the local irritation uh, the person can swim or take a shower with the patch but cannot take hot water bath at in that is increases absorption and that may cause uh, cause overdose then while disposing of the patch it should uh, it should be folded inwards uh, so that discarded uh, uh, it it cannot come in the contact with uh, persons uh, body part uh, because it may still contain uh, buprenorphine uh, some drug and uh, so it should be in discarded in a blue container for in case of hospital and in dustbin properly while at home person should wash hand after afterwards available strength of buprenorphine uh, patch in india are 5 10 or 20 microgram uh, per hour 7 uh, day patches while in uk it is also available in uh, 35 52.5 uh, and 70 microgram 3 day per hour 3 day or 4 days patch and clinical uses uh, of uh, patch are um, chronic cancer pain uh, with uh, indications of using uh, patch in chronic cancer pain instead of morphine uh, may include uh, intolerable or undesirable side effects with the morphine or any other uh, uh, opioids uh, which is nausea vomiting constipation and hallucination dysphagia uh, disorder less with this uh, buprenorphine uh, when there is poor compliance with the oral medication or tablet phobia is there uh patients with re uh, renal impairment and high risk of uh, tablet or uh, tablet misuse or diversion and then uh, when to start a uh, patient with the buprenorphine patch is uh, for patient taking dose of morphine that is not exact equivalent of uh, morphine one should opt the patch that is slightly more or slightly less than our morphine dose uh, comparison table is on the next slide uh, And then the opioid name uh, patient should start on five or ten microgram per hour patches. The patients with unrelieved pain, despite maximum dose of the opioid, should commence on twenty microgram per hour patch. And if switching to buprenorphine, cause it is possible, uh, opioid reduce hyper uh, the hyperalgesia, reduce calculated. Uh, if you are uh, switching to buprenorphine because of uh, hyperalgesia of any other opioid uh, dose should be calculated equivalent uh, and then reduced to 22 to 25 to 50% after 72 hours if patient is continues to need two or more rescue doses uh, per day strength of the patch should be increased on the next time so this is the uh, comparative uh, comparative, uh, comparative doses um with per oral or subcutaneous or iv morphine per subcutaneous or iv morphine doses is half of that oral uh, so when patient is requiring 12 hour 12 mg per 24 hours uh, with 2 mg dose 
uh, pet should be of five microgram per hour. Same with if patient is requiring 24 hours with uh, five milligram as well, those pet should be 20, 10 microgram per hour. And when patient is requiring 36 uh, milligram per 24 hours with six milligram per as well doses, uh, that should be of 15 uh, micrograms per hour. Uh, in case of 48 uh, microgram per hour, uh, 24 hour required dose uh, with SOS 10 mg doses, uh, that should be of 20 microgram per hour. When available patch are of this strength, uh, these doses are uh, respectively 84, 25, uh, 226, and 160 uh, milligram per uh, 24 hours. Uh, next is, uh, second is non-malignant chronic pain. Uh, when, uh, like, buprenorphine patch can also be used in other chronic condition. Uh, it is well tolerated. Studies have said that well to, it is well tolerated from several weeks to so up to eight months, 18 months without having to produce many side effects. Uh, these conditions are uh, chronic lower back pain, uh, chronic knee pain due to arthritis, uh, post-operative pain, neuropathic pain. Uh, studies supporting positive association are listed in table. Uh, These are a uh, few articles uh, listing one by one. It's management uh, journal of pain research uh, by Joseph uh, in 2016. Management of moderate to severe chronic low back pain with buprenorphine buccal film using novel bioadaptable um, mucoadhesive techno uh, technology. It uh, resulted in uh, a buccal buprenorphine can be an important new addition to help the patient with moderate to severe pain associated with lower back pain. Then uh, next study, uh, Gordon uh, in Pain Rest Managed 2010 showed uh, a topic was the buprenorphine transdermal system for opioid therapy in patients with chronic low back pain. Uh, result was showed that uh, buprenorphine transdermal patch provides new treatment uh, option for around the next round the clock therapy in patients with moderate to severe back pain. Uh, Journal of Pain and Symptom Management of Johnson uh, mentioned that uh, uh, buprenorphine consideration for uh, pain management results show that it has high eff effective analgesic for uh, treatment of moderate to severe pain. A uh, few uh, Cochrane uh, data will show that uh, though it has been used in neuropathic pain, but it there is insufficient evidence to support the if you uh, suggestion to buprenorphine uh, and uh, has any efficacy in any neuropathic pain condition. Uh, then uh, the one uh, studies showed that uh, buprenorphine analgesia following major abdominal surgery uh, in acute post-operative pain, it is equivalent to morphine in management, managing pain after abdominal surgery. Uh, then there uh, studies showed that uh, Management of opioid addiction with buprenorphine uh, that is more effective than uh, more effectively and can be managed by method uh, than methadone. Uh, next, uh, uh, British Journal of Anesthesia efficacy and adverse effect of uh, buprenorphine in acute pain uh, management. Systemic review and meta analysis showed that buprenorphine. Are uh, uh, was an effective, uh, equally effective and analgesic and remains alternative opioid because of uh, its ease of administration, duration of action, and its reduced incidence of puritis. And uh, buprenorphine uh, pharmacological review updated on trans uh, mucosal and long acting formulation showed that theoretically implantable and injectable buprenorphine produ products uh, should increase the adherence and reduce diversion on misuse. But empirical data are not yet available to confirm this potentially important pa uh, patient and uh, public health benefit. Uh, it is also used in uh, opioid replacement therapy uh, or uh, opioid uh, substitute therapy uh, that is de addiction. Uh, as we all know that uh, its high affinity for mu receptor uh, is all uh, is primary reason that buprenorphine can be pre can precipitate withdrawal which when given to individual physically or uh, physically dependent on opioids. 
precipitated withdrawal can be avoided and particularly among persons dependent on short uh, acting opioids by waiting to administer buprenorphine until signs of uh, opioid uh, withdrawal emerge. This is common clinical strategy for buprenorphine induction. Uh, Mugenorphine was approved by FDA in 2002 for management uh, for opioid uh, dependence. Um, for uh, the addiction, buprenorphine patch sublingual tablets, sublingual tablets with combination of naloxone uh, and uh, buprenorphine buccal implants, uh, uh, bu buccal uh, strip and implants. And, uh, those are not available in India, are being used. Uh, buprenorphine micro induction with the Bernice method of uh, induction is commonly used. It is uh, preferred over methadone because of its easy availability and lesser side effects unlike QT prolongation on uh, with methadone and uh, available in multiple uh, because it's available in multiple formulation and strength. The next uh, sublingual tablets. Uh, it is available in 20, 200 microgram sublingual tablet 0.2 mg uh, which can be used every six to eight hourly available in India in many brands. Uh, 400 micrograms sublingual tablets, uh, it has high ceiling dose for uh, sublingual buprenorphine, like about 10 to 10 milligram per 24 hours. And it is equivalent to about 480 to 600 milligram per 24 hours uh, oral morphine. Then it can also be used as a uh, Antidepressant. Uh, buprenorphine, uh, as we know, that acts on copper receptor via antagonism. This receptor ex are expressed in dopaminergic neurons where they modulate the release of dopamine. The, the dopamine, dopaminergic system has been tied to signaling pathway related to, to reward, uh, reward uh, mood, and behavior. Copper receptor agonists inhibit the release of uh, dopamine, which can induce stress and dysphoria. Several studies evaluated the relationship between dopaminergic pharmacogenes and clinical outcome of buprenorphine therapy. Um, buprenorphine, samidorphine, and the combination for, uh, that is combination product of buprenorphine and samidorphine, uh, which appears to useful for treatment of re treatment re related resistant uh, buprenorphine. This is the uh, the other thing is uh, refractive OCD. OCD being uh, disabling disorder often under recognized and often distracted to treatment. Uh, few studies suggested uh, that uh, it, in, uh, it, help, it is helpful in uh, treatment of refractive uh, OCD. Then buprenorphine with naloxone. Uh, naloxone is added to buprenorphine in order to prevent diversion, diversion for, or for uh, illicit uh, intravenous misuse. Uh, sublingual uh, film coated tablet formulations are available. That is also available in India. Uh, buprenorphine naloxone sublingual tablets have higher bioavailability bio than original uh, buprenorphine and naloxone tablets. Uh, uh, 5.4 to 1.7 mg and 1.4 to 0.36 oral tablet is bioequivalent to 8 to, to 8 uh, to 2 mg and 2. Uh, 2 to 0.25 buprenorphine naloxone tablet respectively and 0.7 to 0.18 mg buprenorphine naloxone dose is lowest dose available. Then injectable uh, buprenorphine uh, 300 microgram to uh, 600 microgram per ml for IV and IM use. 300 microgram um, per ml is available in here. Uh, First is as intramuscular injection. Uh, onset of action is 15 minutes and may persist up to six hours or longer. Peak effect is in one hour. The usual dose it can, can be administered by deep in, intramuscular slow, that is over at least two minutes. Uh, the high risk patient, like elderly, debilitated, presence of respiratory disease, uh, can, are, or, and or are patient with uh, See, uh, that are on other CNS depressions are uh, such as uh, in immediate uh, post operative period, the dose should be reduced by approximately one half. Uh, single IM doses up to 0.6 mg uh, to non high risk patient, depending on the severity of pain and uh, uh, response of patient, can be given. More than 0.6 single dose uh, does not have any uh, sufficient data to use. Then next uh, is intravenous injection. Uh, time to pick is 30 to 60 minutes. 
uh, and intravenous buprenorphine has been shown to provide analgesia as adequate as, as uh, intravenous morphine. Uh, Abranson and Kali showed that uh, buprenorphine provides analgesia for up to 13 hours in dose ranges for, ranging from uh, 5 to 15 mg per kg. It can be repeated in six hours internal, uh, intervals if needed. Extra caution should be exercised with uh, intravenous UDA with administration, particularly with initial dose. Uh, next is epidural uh, buprenorphine uh, off label use. Buprenorphine has been used successfully by a uh, epidural route uh, without significant respiratory depression or with, and with good analgesia. Epidural buprenorphine is most likely to absorb rapidly from epidural space into systemic circulation and acts as, a, as a centrally in the supraspinal region to produce analgesia similar to intravenous buprenorphine. Adequate epidural analgesia with buprenorphine for post-operative pain illness have been achieved for CA, coronary artery bypass surgery, gynecologic surgery, genital urinary surgery with children, and upper and lower abdominal surgery, and for the treatment of uh, rib fractures. Epidural dose of buprenorphine ranges from 4 to 8 mg per hour, which is as effective as epidural uh, morphine at the dose of 8 mg per hour for most surgeries. Uh, lower abdominal surgery might require higher dose uh, of 15 mg per hour uh, for epidural uh, buprenorphine. Buprenorphine is semi-synthetic lipophilic op opioid that is less water soluble than morphine. Thus, effectiveness of epidural can depend on the site of injection of drug. This is the study show, uh, that shows uh, epidural uh, buprenorphine in uh, uh, post-operative period can be as uh, effective, effective as morphine. Intrathecal buprenorphine, uh, that is also an off label use. Uh, buprenorphine has been shown to provide more prolonged pain control in C section delivery patients compared with control who did not take bu buprenorphine. Seleno and Capno, uh, Caponga uh, compared effect of intrathecal hyperbaric buprenorphine with two groups taking 0 0.03 and 0 0.05 MD of intrathecal buprenorphine in addition to hyperbaric uh, buprenorphine and found that there was longer pain free intervals in patient re receiving buprenorphine. They also found that within patient group receiving buprenorphine, longer effect was seen in patients than uh, high dose of buprenorphine. Intra-articular injection of buprenorphine. Uh, a study by Veracy and Kali showed that intra-articular buprenorphine uh, produced a comparable pain uh, compared with intra- uh, comparable pain control after knee arthroscopy. So uh, it has shown significantly uh, reduced the amount of analgesia and required after knee arthroscopy. Uh, buprenorphine in regional anesthesia, uh, Candido uh, and colleagues showed that addition of buprenorphine to local anesthesia in axillary brachial plexus block prolonged the post-operative uh, analgesia. And subcutaneous buprenorphine, uh, onset of action is 15 minutes, peak being one hour. Uh, buprenorphine can be given subcutaneously for pain relief in early post operative period at the dose of 30 mg per hour. Uh, this route is especially useful for patients with poor intravenous excess. Uh, duration of pain relief is approximately six hours. Can be used in patients requiring round the clock opioid therapy and presence of acute or chronic pain. Uh, buprenorphine raw dose implant. Uh, most recently, the FDA approved subdermally implanted buprenorphine raw uh, probufin that lasts for uh, three months and it is also available in one month or six, three months uh, uh, preparation and it, uh, it is made to, uh, meant to decrease the misuse. Uh, maintenance treatment of opioid disorder, uh, use disorder in patients who leave, uh, who have achieved the sustained prolonged clinical stability on low moderate dose, that is less than 8 mg per day of buprenorphine, um, that uh, this product can be used. And uh, other is uh, buprenorphine buckle film that is available in 75, 150, 300, 450, uh, 600, 750, and 900 micrograms film. Uh, it is water soluble polymeric film uh, adheres to the buccal mucosa and dissolves in minutes. Uh, buprenorphine naloxone buccal uh, film was approved by this, uh, recently by uh, 6 June 2014 by FDA for maintenance treatment of opioid dependence and should be used as a part of complete treatment.
plan to include counseling and psychiatric psychosocial support. The Buckle uh, film is indicated for maintenance therapy of uh, over uh, dependence. Maintenance therapy, those should be given as a single daily dose, should be adjusted using incre increment or decrement of uh, 2.1 to uh, 0.3 naloxone uh, Buckle film unit, and recommended target uh, dose should be. Uh, is 8.4 to uh, 1.4 uh, naloxone and uh, it ranges from 2, 2.1 to 0.3 to 12.6 to 2.1 per day. Above uh, this range, uh, the uh, movement does not show provide any clinical advantage. This is a study uh, that uh, buprenorphine buccalfin can also be used in uh, Low chronic low back pain and it is effective. Uh, caution and precautions that should be taken up uh, by a uh, uh, clinician when used using buprenorphine. It causes CNS depression. It may which may impair physical or mental abilities. So person must be cautioned about performing tasks that require mental alertness. That is operating machinery or while well driving uh, when patient is drive driver. Uh, Buprenorphin formulation can still cause serious respiratory depression and death, particularly when extracted and injected intravenously in combination with benzodiazepine or used with other CNS depression that is sedative in the psychotic or alcohol. Use with caution in patients with biliary tract dysfunction, including acute pancreatitis. That uh, we all know that all opioids can uh, cause have uh, some effect on biliary uh, tract. Uh, use uh, with caution in patients with uh, history of ileus or bowel obstruction. Um, buprenorphine has been observed to cause QT prolongation, although it is uh, very low in compared with um, uh, other opioids and methadone. But person should be cautious in case of uh, person uh, patient having a uh, history of uh, any cardiac uh, diseases. Uh, then use subdermal implants with the caution in patient with history of keloid formation or connective disease or history of recurrent MRSA infection. Use with caution in patient with the history of seizure disorder. It may cause or exacerbate uh, the existing seizures. Now the adverse effect uh, of the buprenorphine is immediate and long term management. Immediate adverse effect. Uh, common adverse effect reactions are associated with use of buprenorphine are similar to those of other opioids, uh, mainly uh, acting on mu receptor. Uh, so, but constipation and central nervous system effect are seen less frequently than with morphine or, or strong opioids. Uh, so, commonly seen immediate adverse effects are nausea, vomiting, drowsiness, dizziness, headache, memory loss, cognitive and neural inhibition. Uh, perspiration, itchiness, dry mouth, shrinking of pupil, uh, meiosis, orthostatic hypertension, maladjectory dysfunction, difficulty, decreased libido, and urinary retention. Uh, hypersensitivity, including bronchospasm, angiogenic edema, and anaphylactic uh, shock, have been also have been reported. First is uh, nausea and vomiting in detail. Metalysis of opioid in moderate to severe non cancer pain found nausea to uh, affect 20% of patients, 21% of patients. It can cause dizziness, nausea, and vomiting by stimulating a medically CT cell, increasing patient in uh, inner way or vestibular system, that is, motion sickness, and inducing gastroparesis or uh, by GERD. Oral uh, centrally acting anti emetics like haloperidol, metoclopramide can be given priorly to uh, decrease the uh, incidence of uh, nausea and vomiting. With severe continuous vomiting, parental administration can also be given. Uh, generally, no tolerance to nausea are usually develops. Uh, respiratory uh, effect on respiratory system it occurs more often in those who are also taking uh, benzodiazepine alcohol or having underlying lung disease. Usually, a uh, reversal agent for opioids such as naloxone may only partially effective, and additional effort to uh, support breathing may be required. Respiratory depression may less than with other opioids, particularly with chronic use. Uh, in setting of acute pain management, though buprenorphine appears to cause the same rate of respiratory depression as with morphine. Uh, constipation. 
No blood in this concentration is common in adverse effect associated with the OP therapy. Prophylactic treatment should be provided for constipation. Uh, like uh, other uh, peripherally acting opioid uh, antagonists such as salimumab and naltrexone, while available, or by stepwise approach uh, like uh, osm osmotic uh, using an osmotic agent uh, or the combination with source of or mild peristaltic stimulant. Oral, uh, oral naloxone, which has minimal uh, systemic absorption, can also has also been uh, empirically uh, used to treat constipation without reversing analgesia in most cases. Uh, daytime drowsiness can be minimized, uh, minimized by using low starting dose, and uh, if some uh, somnolence occurs, it usually considered within few days as uh, subsides with within few days and tolerance generally develops. Uh, use, uh, the use of insulin can be considered if persistent somnolence has uh, impact on patient function. Delirium, uh, is, it is seen frequently in elderly patients uh, with cognitive impairment. Psychomomentative effect with hallucination, nightmares and anxiety have been reported uh, after using this. Uh, then long-term adverse effects uh, can, uh, are uh, buprenorphine dependence, addiction, tolerance, serotolerance, physical dependence, aberrant behavior, and hypogonadism, among which physical uh, dependence uh, is uh, treatment carries the risk of causing physiological uh, dependence. Uh, physical dependence is not an indicator for uh, addiction, and appear can be safely discontinued if physically is person is physically dependent. Uh, the syndrome is self-limiting in usually is, uh, lasting for three to ten days and it not, uh, is not life-threatening. Once patient is stabilized, buprenorphine three option remains con uh, continual use, switching to uh, buprenorphine naloxone and medically supervised withdrawal. Addiction is a primary uh, chronic neurobiologic disease with genetic, uh, with genetic and psychosocial. And, and environmental factors are influencing. Uh, it is characterized by behavior that include one or more following impaired control over drug use, craving, compulsive use, and continued use despite harm. Uh, gradual decreasing dose along with other behavioral therapy counseling may help. Tolerance uh, describes the need of progressively increase the opioid dose in order to maintain the same degree of anesthesia. Opioid rotation may help. Aberrant behavior is selling prescription drugs uh, to other people forgery, stealing other patients with prescription, injecting oral formulation, obtaining uh, prescription from a non-medical source, and this adding to naloxone to buprenorphine reduces the chance of misuse. Hypogonadism is uh, less seen with this uh, than the other strong opioid. Addiction is a uh, primary chronic neuro... Uh, sorry. Uh, comparison of safety profile uh, of buprenorphine with other opioids, which suggests uh, less GI uh, effect, uh, that is constipation and uh, sedation than other strong opioids. Respiratory distress is also very slow, uh, low, and uh, immunosuppression is not uh, present. Uh, tolerance, the, uh, to tolerance develops gradually, and uh, addiction dependence liability is very low and uh, not seen with hyperalgesia. Uh, drug interaction as buprenorphine is metabolized by a CIP to uh, 3 to 4 day, uh, just most of drugs and opioids. Uh, use with caution or avoid with concurrent use while using CIP3 inhibitors as well as inducer. Uh, these are the drugs which can uh, be avoided or used with caution that uh, sedative, hypnotics, antipsychotic, monomine, uh, MAO inhibitors. And uh, these are the listed uh, inhibitors and inducers uh, of the CYP CA4. Uh, recommendation for Indian setting: uh, buprenorphine patch and sublingual tablets are available. And uh, despite having unique pharmacological property, it is underutilized drug in our day-to-day -day practice. Reason being uh, easy availability of other op strong opioids like morphine, fentanyl, uh, or tramadol, less familiarity or less or inadequate available data showing its effects on uh, various mixed uh, pain. Uh, concluding the session with uh, this uh, uh, study uh, of measures showing 12 reasons for considering buprenorphine as a frontline analgesic in management of pain because it's effective in cancer pain, effective in neuropathic pain, produces less concentration, 
preferred choice along with the NSAID and other uh, biliary colic patients treats broader array of pain phenotypes. Uh, it has ceiling effect on respiratory depression, causes less cognitive impairment than other opioid, uh, not immunosuppressant, does not adversely impact on HBSCs or hypogonadism, then uh, does not cause QD prolongation. It is safe and effective and one of the safest opioid to use in renal failure and withdrawal symptoms are milder or drug dependence liability and less. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lekha. Dr. Bhavana, uh, would you like to... Uh, Lekha, can you close up, switch, uh, stop yes, shift slides? We can see. So, Dr. Bhavana, would you like Good to... Morning, yeah. Uh, so, in summary, buprenorphine is a safe uh, analgesic uh, opioid option. Uh, at present, sublingual we are using as a um, for breath or pain uh, only with uh, transdermal patch, uh, not using alone um, for pain management. So, ma'am, you may share your experience for sublingual. So, uh, I think uh, I, I want to ask everyone because uh, uh, I, I think those who are those who can reply this answer that uh, as Lekha has narrated that it is a good analgesic. It has a lot of advantage of using uh, as an analgesia, but still it is not a very popular drug, in, especially in cancer pain patients. So what are the various reasons and what are their experiences? So we can start with all, because uh, if I consider my experience, I think I don't, uh, we don't use buprenorphine for cancer pain management patients. Uh, rarely we have used, I still remember on, um, around uh, maybe, um, just 10 15 years back once only uh, morphine stock was not available for few if for a few days like more, not more than a week that time we have used buprenorphine but we are not using buprenorphine if we, even if patients are coming from outside uh, various hospitals we're using buprenorphine we remove buprenorphine patch we wait till the time uh, right titration time comes and then we titrate with morphine but uh, I know there are a lot of side effects, but what are the, uh, means like still people uh, in the private sector, people are using buprenorphine a lot. So I really don't know uh, what is others experience. So we can start with uh, uh, maybe Dr. Stanley, do you have any experience of using buprenorphine? Um, no, no, I, I also don't have much experience with that. Uh, but one uh, area of use which uh, may be useful, uh, apart from cancer pain and things like that, is breathlessness. Is uh, breathlessness in chronic heart failure? You know, because uh, it it can be helpful. You know, it's a long acting and it can help uh, for a day for a total the whole day. You know, for the patient, and uh, because any anxiety causes increase in heart rate. And when they have to use any drug frequently, you know, like hourly or four hourly, uh, then it becomes a little uh, stressful. So this is a good alternate too, but I don't have experience of using it. Thank you, Dr. Stille. Dr. Jennifer, do you have experience of using buprenorphine and what are your experiences? Thank you for that uh, good presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. We do use uh, buprenorphine patches uh, transdermal patches of uh, 5 micrograms, 10 micrograms. Again, we stick to the indications of transdermal patch use, if at all we need to use. An adv advantage of uh, buprenorphine over transdermal uh, fentanyl is uh, it, it works for a week rather than every third day. So that way, a little more cost effective than uh, fentanyl patch. So in those who need... Uh, who are only on lower doses of strong opioids and are able to, uh, then in those sort of patients, we use buprenorphine patch. We've not had any issues. Uh, when we've rightly chosen patients, we've uh, seen good benefit. Sublingual, we had, uh, we had used uh, many, many years ago, but at the moment, uh, we don't, we're not having sublingual with us. Thank you, Dr. Jennifer. 
Dr. Aruna, you you are writing something. Uh, uh, Dr. Aruna, you want to share? Or introduce yourself and please share your experience. Yeah, good morning, uh, madam. Uh, I'm Dr. Aruna. I'm working at uh, ESIC Hyderabad uh, Medical College. So we use buprenorphin patches for uh, mild to moderate uh, cancer pain, ma'am. It was uh, excellent. It gives excellent, but for severe pain, uh, it's not good. And uh, and it has tolerance. So that is the main drawback. And uh, so for initial phase of uh, pain management, uh, uh, we are uh, breaking the ch pain uh, chain with uh, buprenorphine patches for seven days. Patients are comfortable. And for post-operative also, we use uh, for initial one week or two weeks maximum. But for long term, it's not uh, that effective. That is our experience. Thank you, Dr. Aruna. So Dr. Madhu from Sabdarjang Hospital, she's professor of anesthesiology in Bilbrugu, practicing palliative care. Dr. Madhu, you wanted to you want to share your experience? Uh, good morning, ma'am. Thank you for a good presentation. Really enjoyed it. Ma'am, yes, we are using Buprin often. And uh, but we use it as a second line. At least I prefer it as a second line because see, there is a uh, this thing that patient uh, it comes out. Uh, it may come up from the patient, though it is effective. The skin from the skin and then he goes into pain. So I don't prefer it. I prefer morphine to it. But in our medical oncology uh, OPD, it is used regularly because they don't want to maintain. They don't have the nurses to maintain the thing that they for morphine, all the things that you have to maintain before you give it to a patient. So they use it regularly. And when their patient cannot be treated with a morphine morphine patch, then they send that patient to us. Many a times they come to us. Then we usually put them on morphine and treat their pain. This is what I have seen. Thank you, but Dr. we Dr. use Dr. it Dr. for in surgery I... department. They have multiple trauma. Then surgery people send these patients to us. For them, we put the morphine patch. And one single patch usually helps these people. The second patch is usually not required. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Madhu. Somebody was I, Dr. Please. Nandini here, Sushma. Can Nandini, I speak? Please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, buprenorphine is a very old drug in terms of, you know, injectable format. And I heard that uh, it was presented as off-label use, uh, epidural and all. But I think before uh, we had so much of access to fentanyl and others, we would be using uh, buprenorphine also for post-op uh, analgesia for uh, post-operative pain and uh, anesthesiology. Now that is a part. Um, I wanted to make a few comments on the application of the transdermal patch. And it was mentioned uh, that, you know, we cannot shave and use it and we could pluck the hair off, but it's extremely painful. So please choose a non-hairy part and apply it um, because um, otherwise the, uh, and another big thing I think which was missed was the cost. Uh, it's seven days, but it's not really cost effective because it doesn't work till the third day. So, you know, three days we are anyway going to supplement. It takes for the, for the seven days uh, that uh, patch. Third day is the time when the action actually starts. And second thing, the patch costs more than 2,500 rupees. So when I have encountered these patches are when patient comes. It. And so we are helpless. If we remove the patch, it is like, you know, putting the 2,500 plus rupees down the drain. And uh, as um, one of the uh, faculty mentioned, it is good for up to mild to moderate pain. It is not a good drug for uh, moderate to severe pain. And uh, I would not use it as first line at all, even for mild pain, uh, because we need to know which, which dose of the patch needs to be put. If we blindly put some, we don't even know what's happening for three days, because until that, we don't even get the results. So overall, it's not a popular drug uh, from in my prescriptions, but I see it is popular from, as uh, the, uh, Dr. Aruna mentioned, patient usually comes with it and we struggle to get the patch off and move on to some kind of pure agonist. Buprenorphine is not a pure agonist. It has a ceiling dose and it can even reverse the existing analgesia because of its antagonistic action. I have done my MD thesis on buprenorphine and it has its own advantages, which she mentioned, but it's not a good drug for chronic cancer pain. And for low backache, etc., like I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't venture into that kind of therapy. Thank you. So uh, there are there are two questions that can be can be combined morphine and buprenorphine. I think we should not combine morphine and buprenorphine. Uh, another question is: Can patch be used for abdominal malignancy also in place of fentanyl? I don't think there is any uh, reason that we cannot use, but I don't think that we should use. 
uh, uh, morphine. If you have fentanyl available, I think fentanyl has a better drug profile, drug analgesic effect, and it will be better for your patients in abdominal malignancy rather than using buprenorphine. But Dr. Bhavna, would you like to add in this? And uh, we have. Uh, yes, yes, yes ma'am. We are using uh, both the fentanyl and buprenorphine uh, in different patients. Actually, uh, but uh, in. Um, okay, well, patients are happy with buprenorphine also, particularly in patients' back pain and uh, less sedate eviction. When patient complains uh, of sedation with fentanyl patch, um, they, are, they will well accept buprenorphine. And that uh, we don't have cost issues because it is available in hospital supply, both the pages. So we use both. So thank you. I think with the, uh, I am. Um, we should not go with a mixed feeling. I think uh, morphine will remain as a first line drug for all the cancer pain patients. As far as the um, uh, titration and all uh, titration and uh, good analgesic effects are concerned, morphine and fentanyl should be used as a first line. But buprenorphine is not that bad. Buprenorphine can be used when you don't have uh, morphine and fentanyl available. Other uh, so uh, my uh, I think. Uh, with this lecture, with a super, very nice lecture, Dr. Bhavna and Lika, uh, with this lecture, we have got a lot of knowledge of buprenorphine, but I will still recommend that if you try, if you are managing cancer pain patients, I think your first line drug should be morphine and fentanyl. It should not be buprenorphine, but if these drugs are not available, buprenorphine can be used as a good analgesic. People will find it difficult to purchase. People will find it difficult to get the right dose and so uh, purchase this from patient point of view and get the right dose means titration of the dose will be difficult when you are you are trying to titrate the medication for cancer pain patients so uh, i think there are a lot of advantage but still i will uh, my recommendation and everybody is as nandani and i think we can get the sense of the lecture that we should be knowing everything about buprenorphine because if morphine and fentanyls are not available, this is, will be the drug of choice for pain management and it will give good analgesia, but still we should prefer and it should remain uh, mainly for drug addiction program. Thank you very much. And I can see Dr. Reena George's last comment if you want to say something, Dr. Yes. Reena. Uh, thank you for a nice lecture. The only thing I wanted to add, one situation where we've used it is, you know, in the terminal phase, someone who is, uh, fairly opioid naive, has nausea, cannot take the oral route, has borderline or renal failure, like, um, and it's only a matter of a week or two, and the family wants to go soon. Uh, sometimes it has been helpful in that context because uh, it is transdermal, it is safe in renal failure, and um, the oral route is difficult. But that's usually for a short period. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, I want to add something. Yeah. Yes, um, yes, in our cured patient, uh, we uh, to taper the morphine, buprenorphine patch is also a good option, and uh, it helps, ma'am. But no, not many patients, but usually. Okay. Very good. So thank you. We have overshooted three minutes, and uh, minutes he started at six thirty. So. Uh, uh, Thank you very much. And Dr. Vidya says that uh, thank you. And also malignant ball obstruction who is uh, opioid nerve uh, or very low dose. Yes. So we have to, it's a good analgesia, analgesics. So take home is it's a good analgesics and you should be using it on the situational basis that when it will be appropriate to use it. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for all the comments uh, right from Dr. Stanley, Dr. Jennifer, Dr. Aruna, Dr. Madhu, uh, Dr. Reena, Vidya, Nandini. So thank you all those who have joined in the discussion. And thank you, uh, Dr. Preeti and your team, Bhavna and Leka. And thank you, Nisha and Archana. We will see you all next week before 6.30 with a new topic. Thanks a lot.